talk to you guys about asthma. Um, it's an increasingly common disease and diagnosis, as many of you know. Um, I'm going to tell you about my story with asthma, why you should learn about it. Shouldn't you have papers like you have a slide? You should have papers like you have a copy of the slide. Can we make another copy of this? Yeah, let's just hold some papers. Yeah, hold some papers, keep some papers. Let me just put these books left. It's so I know. Just put it, just put it on your lap. Okay. okay, I'll start off. Okay. Today I'm going to talk to you about asthma. Um, it seems that it's an increasingly common diagnosis and problem. Uh, as to why that is, there's many different theories, genetics, pollution, our lifestyle. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about my history, my story with asthma, why I think we should learn more about asthma and understand it, the basics of asthma, and um, a little bit of respiratory anatomy so that you understand it a little better, the symptoms of asthma, the treatment, and what treatment is supposed to achieve. Um, so let's t I'll start with my story, as you can see on this slide, my story with asthma. Um, when I was 13 years old, um, I was going through a hard time, as being 13 really just normally is. Um, I was adjusting to junior high school. My grandfather had just died. My mother was planning <laughs> was planning a, a wedding. Um, and I woke up the morning of my mother's wedding. I couldn't breathe. I was gasping for air. Um, and so we had to go to the emergency room um, and where I had to inhale this mist, this humidifier mist stuff, which I later found out was albuterol, and I later found out I had asthma. Um, so the definition of what was happening to me and what asthma is, is a chronic disease characterized by reversible obstruction of the airways, which thank goodness it's reversible, otherwise there would be a lot more deaths um, due to it. So the example that I gave you was an example of intrinsic um, triggers of asthma. It was my stress, my emotional, um, my emotional state of being was the cause of my asthma, but there's also extrinsic factors, as you can see on the slide. Intrinsic and extrinsic are the different um, triggers. The extrinsic factors come from outside of the body and are allergens, dust, pet dander, uh, cold air, things like that. So why does it matter? Why should we know about asthma at all? Well, I have some statistics from the CDC, um, which is the Center for Disease Control. Uh, there's 7.3 of, of American adults are diagnosed with asthma which is a pretty large percentage. 9.4 of American children are diagnosed. Um, why is it more common in children? There's lots of different um, debates about that. And in 2006, 3,613 deaths were reported due to asthma. <clears throat> so that's why we should learn about it, because it's, it's really, it's big. So the basics of asthma. Um, why did I feel like I couldn't breathe that morning? What happens when someone is having asthma? To understand this better, we should understand a little bit more about breathing and the mechanics of breathing in general. Um, you can see on the slide of your respiratory system, breathing is the passage of air. Um, take a big deep breath. The air passes from your nose or your mouth down through your trachea, into your bronchioles, all the way down to the alveoli where the acid exchange occurs. Um, this in alveoli is where oxygen is actually entered into the body and carbon dioxide is exhaled. So what's happening when somebody has asthma, go to the next slide, the symptoms, what are the symptoms of asthma? Um, we have cough and increased mucus production. The person will cough more than normal and this happens due to the increased mucus production. Now you might think to yourself, well they're having a hard time breathing, why is the body gonna make more mucus? Um, but it's actually a protection mechanism. It's trying to um, grab hold of that foreign particle or that allergen so you can cough it up. It makes more mucus so it becomes more sticky so you can get rid of whatever it is that's in there. Um, this person will also experience shortness of breath. Now the shortness of breath is caused by smooth muscle contraction around the bronchial. There is smooth muscle around it. The smooth muscle constricts um, and that's bronchial constriction and also spasms causing that's bronchospasm. So they'll feel short of breath due to the muscle tightening and loosening. As you can see, the picture of the normal bronchiole, you can see the muscles around there, and the asthmatic bronchiole is very constricted. 
And um, if you get close enough to a person having asthma symptoms, you'll hear them wheezing. You'll hear this whistling sound as they breathe. Um, that's due to the vibrations. There's all those increased secretions and the airway constriction, the air moving past those secretions and then the constriction um, makes vibrations. And that's the noise that you hear is the whistling or the wheezing. There's many different treatments for asthma. Um, Usually they use a combination of short-acting and long-acting inhalers. The long-acting inhalers um, are prevention. They help prevent bronchoconstriction from happening. And usually you'll carry a rescue inhaler or a, or a short-acting inhaler with you if you have um, symptoms in between, which oftentimes people do. Um, they do have some side effects, increased heart rate and nervousness for those short-acting inhalers. That's why when I was having uh, my first asthma attack and they gave me that mister, I felt hurt beating so fast. So they do have some side effects. Um, antihistamines and allergy medicine can help if your asthma is due to an allergy response. It helps the body not to respond quite so hastily. Um, also for acute um, asthma, acute asthma exacerbations, they may give you oral corticosteroids like prednisone. Um, which decrease inflammation in the airways, but also everywhere else. So it's kind of a negative. It has some side effects and can, and can um, you can have mood swings and increased appetite. They like not to go there unless they have to, which, which oftentimes they do. Um, so the goal of treatment, according to the American Lung Association, is to breathe better, do more of the things you want to do, and to have fewer asthma symptoms, which makes sense because if you can't breathe, you can't really do anything else. So. That is what I have to tell you about asthma today.